Some cases still haunt me to this day. Some because they are closed and I must live with the truth. Some because I will simply never know the answer of what really happened. These films have gone missing and it is up to me, Detective J.H. Eastman, to gather all of the evidence to figure out what really happened to these films. This is Forgotten Monsters. Losing files to an important project or even special pictures from your phone is always a frustrating event. However, with the digital age, we are able to back up many of our files and make precautions to make sure it never happens again. Sometimes we are lucky, long lost files can be recovered. However, it wasn't so easy back then and because of this, we lost so many fabulous films. Welcome to Jump Scare's segment, Forgotten Monsters. Today's film is London After Midnight, from 1927, probably the most famous lost film of all time. Before London After Midnight was lost forever to the 1967 MGM Vault Fire, it cemented itself as one of Lon Chaney's most memorable roles as the hypnotist, with sharp, shark-like teeth, wide, bulging eyes, and a tall top hat, and a cape that featured some sweet, Bat wings. The hypnotist's teeth were very much inspired by Todd Browning's incident that caused him to lose all of his teeth and to have upper and lower dentures. These dentures were once given to a hotel manager in San Francisco after he told Browning to party less rambunctiously. How rude. When Browning gave the teeth to the manager, he told him to go bite himself. More like, go bite yourself and then handed him the teeth. There is no evidence that the 1915 crash was the cause of Browning's tooth loss. There is also a claim that he was kicked by a horse. So much for playing horse prince. Would have been safer. Soon, Browning and Chaining, who have worked together on the Unholy Three and the Unknown together, partnered to create the hypnotist's chilling look, which according to The Monster Show by David J. Skull, is a clear evocation of a Freudian concept the devouring, castrating, vagina dentata. You know what it is. Watch teeth if you don't. London After Midnight would be Browning's first entrance into the realm of vampirism before directing 1931's classic Dracula. London After Midnight premiered December 3rd, 1927 and has had mixed reviews. Some saying that the story was confusing or incoherent. However, despite this, the film was considered one of the most successful collaborations between Cheney and Browning and is very, very sought after. We know why. There have been many rumors and conspiracies about whether or not there is any surviving film. The only surviving proof of the film so far has been still images that were reconstructed together in 2002 to create a 45-minute still photograph film that was later released on the Lon Chaney Legacy Collection DVD by TCM, which is something I need to add to my collection. Many other elements were either missing or completely destroyed, and I want to underline the missing part because that becomes very important later. One of the most Recent false alarms was in 2017, when producer Robert Parigi shared the rumor that a seven-reel print of the film has been found in Spain, which it was before believed that it was in Cuba. However, sadly, again, this was a false alarm, again based off of the missing parts. And there has not been any other rumors recently that I have heard of. However, there are many prank sites claiming that there are lost copies and something about, well, we'll just wait until the license is up in 2020-something. You get the idea. They want a little money. But one of the most popular rumors, the most persistent rumor about London After Midnight is that some collector has the film and has been waiting for the copyright to expire. That's what I meant by waiting for the time to be up in 2002. But the legend probably dates back to the early 70s when a New England rental source named Cecil Miller listed the film among his upcoming titles, mostly as a gag. Very good April Fool's prank, if you ask me. How was the film lost, you ask? Well, according to my evidence, 
Nitrate film base was introduced in the 1880s by John Carbot, Hannibal Goodwin, and Eastman Kodak. Sadly, nitrate film can not only can decompose over a few decades, but is highly flammable and has the ability to spontaneously combust. Who knew? This has led to several incidences such as projection booth fires and death of audience members. The 1967 MGM vault fire was actually started by an electrical fire that soon ignited this nitrate film, causing the loss of many historical films. Though preservation is possible, this is a positive note, 1903 original nitrate or negative of the Great Train Robbery is in excellent, pristine condition in the Library of Congress. So there is a positive note for you guys and that it is possible to preserve nitrate. Wouldn't recommend keeping it in your home, however. Despite the fact that film, the film is forever lost, its impact is not. The film has been referenced countless times, including the show Whitechapel, if you watch it, A. Eh? Inspiring a ghost in the Haunted Mansion Disney attraction, if you've seen it, let me know. The industrial goth band London After Midnight, who I really like. And of course, the LGBT icon himself, the Babadook, his boyfriend Pennywise is very proud. The hypnotist himself has his own figurines, t-shirts, and has been on many forms of merchandise, even board games. It is a horror fan's dream, including my own, to one day see the discovery of the long lost London After Midnight. I mean, it's the one monster that's been forgotten and lost that still is beloved and has its own merchandise. It's crazy. However, Todd Browning has remade the film under a different name, Mark of the Vampire in 1935, starring Bela Lugosi. Sadly, the film was made a few years after Lon Chaney died. But the film is brilliant and probably the only way to fully enjoy the story of London After Midnight, besides the 2002 reconstruction that you can find on YouTube. Not sure if it's legal, but it's there. Well. I am J.A. Cheeseman, also known as Sierra Caballero, and this has been Jump Scare's segment of Forgotten Monsters. Until next time, until the next case. Stay spooky. Beautiful, perfect, fantabulous. Leave screen and then grab your coffee. Oh, forgot my coffee. <laughs> <laughs>